YouTubers, I'm back in my studio again. Way too early this morning for me, even though it's after nine o'clock. You can see kind of the aftermath we had for our photo shoot this weekend. We did uh, six models with body paint and um, on trampolines that uh, for a cosplay company. And uh, last night went to two o'clock in the morning because one of the models was late and. But I'm back here, I had a pickup, and the company's coming and picking their trampoline. So I thought I had a, a shirt I haven't shot, and I'd show you my lighting setup for shooting my shirts. I don't do pants yet. I'm for a pants-free society. So let me back up, and this is, you can kind of see an overview um, I know a lot of you don't have the room or equipment to do this, but I'll kind of give you equivalents and you can kind of work it in. But the uh, main important thing is if you're going to do white backgrounds, just have a seamless paper. So there's no creases or folds in your background. If you are using a sheet, get your subject here a bit away from, like five feet away from the sheet. And then make sure you have lights on it that are more powerful than your front lights. And that should blow out most of the wrinkles you will see. You probably have to do a little post work, but um, that's what works. I do have two lights on my background and that will get a nice white background. It's sometimes hard to get the gray in the bottom, but uh, we don't care about, we're just shooting shirts, so it's good. Um, so yeah, I have two strobes on here. My problem is this strobe here I borrowed because I had one go bad. So sometimes it doesn't uh, recycle and flash as quick as the other one. So sometimes I get a little bit of gray on this side, which I can quickly take care of and post. But then up front, this is the main light. I have an eight foot, what we call an octodome softbox. You don't need one that big. I just have it for portraits and it works well. And you want to kind of angle it. I'm going to come around the front a little bit more with it. But you don't want the main part of the light firing right on your subject. So you kind of want to feather it off so you're getting a softer edge light onto your subject. And then this light's soft filling over here. So you're not getting a real harsh light on it. And you don't want to get a bright spot. And this is a fill light. The main light is going to be at a certain power and then my fill light is usually a half to a quarter of that. And this is going to fill in the side a bit. Your customer doesn't want to see a really overly shadowed shirt because then they don't get to see the details. I'll button that when I have two hands. But you do want some shadow in there to show you know the sleeves, the button line, and the collar. But not a whole lot so I usually have a fill light what you can also do for a fill light is I have over there a reflector you can put a reflector here to reflect the main light back on to your subject um, you can use a large sheet of white paper as your reflector over there in that pile of masks at Artec is actually a piece of styrofoam that has a uh, shiny side to it and it's only like five bucks or something for a, for a small half sheet. You can get one of those and set up over here as a reflector. So to save money, you really only need your main light here and some backlights and then reflector. I like using this because I can actually adjust the light setting to get me the fill light I need. So that's it in a nutshell. If you are doing a thinner background or to save money, you can do one light overhead um, hit, hit, and right here behind the subject. Oops, you can't see my hand over here. Behind the subject, so it's hitting the backlight. It all depends on what you have and how much room you have. I showed you my small equipment, which is just the hot lights you get at Home Depot. That will work just as well. Just again, use a cool light bulb in a lower light spectrum so you don't get the yellow tint. And you can put one here, reflector, and then one hitting your backlight. So minimum you need is two. 
for a good setup, you'll want to do two on the back, one here, and if you have another light over here on your light as a fill, you probably want to make it adjustable or, you know, on a dimmer switch or, you know, a lower wattage, a 40, 25 watt, well, you have a 100 watt over here. Something that you can adjust over here. Reflectors, if you have a reflector, you can move the reflector in and out. And another tip is the closer you have your lights to the subject, <laughs> the softer the light's going to be. Um, the further out, you get more of a sharper, harsh light. So we don't have a face here that we want to soften, but I still like to get in close for a nice soft light. So that's it for the light lessons. Any questions, go ahead and let me know. Kind of did this on the fly because I'm still waiting for somebody to pick up stuff. But after I shoot Bob here with his shirt, then uh, I'm out of here. I'm going to go back and I'll probably hit a Salvation Army on the way home and I'm going to sleep. So that's my lighting setup for shooting clothing. And I'm not lazy and try to do it at home. But uh, I know not everyone has a studio or the space to do this. But you can make do even just hanging a big sheet of paper on the wall. Just get your subject away from the wall. You know, three feet is good. So you don't cast a shadow onto your paper. And then if you're using a sheet, you want to stretch it out and put lights on the sheet to blow out the wrinkles so you get a more uniform look. Um, I'll do a video here sooner or later. My post work when I need it on, uh, in Photoshop because I removed the stand in Photoshop and color correct and stuff like that. So that's it for now. This is long enough. It's gone on seven minutes. So I'll talk to you later.